My name is Brad Knight. I'm the Director of Cardiac Electrophysiology at Northwestern Medicine. The EP clinical trials at Northwestern Medicine related to atrial fibrillation really emanate from three areas. One is the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute Clinical Trials Unit, where a lot of our industry-sponsored device trials are supported. The Northwestern University Center for Arrhythmia Research, led by my colleague, Dr. Rod Passman, and our translational experimental EP program, led by my colleague, Rishi Aurora, and now Anna Feniger. We have looked at many different aspects of AF ablation. We've looked at new energy sources, and as many people know, the next exciting new energy source is pulse field ablation. We are also uh, the only site in Illinois that participated in the ultra-low cryoablation with the um, trial I-Class, sponsored by Adagio, that was developed in part by Dr. James Cox, which is to take patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation and for the first procedure, uh, do an extensive left and right atrial ablation, uh, mimicking the maze procedure. We're involved in other aspects of AF therapy, including left atrial appendage, and we are uh, currently enrolling and randomizing patients in both the CHAMPION trial, which is the randomized trial of oral anticoagulation versus the Watchman device, and the CATALYST trial, which is a randomized similar study between the uh, Abbott amulet device and the um, oral anticoagulation. We have access to both the Watchman and the Amulet at Northwestern. We did our first commercial Amulet procedure just a few days ago. Imaging is critical to successful AF ablation, really any ablation procedure in the EP lab. Uh, we have been very interested in intracardiac echo for many years. We perform all of our AF ablations with ice. We had the unique opportunity to be the first in the world to use the new Philips 4D ice or live 3D ice with their catheter uh, to guide EP procedures. And we continue to enroll patients in the registry using this new catheter. But imaging tools also includes mapping systems. We've partnered with Philips and their new dielectric imaging mapping system called Codex, which allows us to uh, look at new potential 3D mapping uh, opportunities, looking at tissue thickness, looking at balloon occlusion tools and things like that. And this week, actually, we'll be doing our first, uh, first in Illinois um, Insight X case with my colleague, Dr. Passman. A transeptal catheterization is required to do a lot of our procedures now in the EP lab. All of our AF ablations require transeptal puncture, as do a lot of the newer structural procedures, such as left atrial appendage closure and mitral clip. Uh, we've always been on the forefront of new technology to safely and efficiently perform transeptal puncture. Uh, we were the first in the world to use the Bayless RF needle and have continued to work with new tools to safely cross the septum, including the new VersaCross radio frequency wire. We've done a lot of research in this area as well. We've uh, looked at the um, result of using electrification of standard mechanical needles and wires and the potential for coring and melting of the, of the tools. And we've recently published our findings um, on that technology. We offer patients with atrial fibrillation early access to clinical trials and early access to new technology to help manage difficult patients with atrial fibrillation.